They pulled it from the mud of an old battlefield, a perfectly round iron sphere, sealed tight for five centuries. Not a myth. Not a legend. A real piece of artillery from a war fought before anyone today was born. Archaeologists recognized it instantly, a cannon shot. But the question wasn't what it was. The question was what was inside it. Because we now know from real excavations, real collections, and real surviving shells that by the early 1500s, cannonballs were not always solid. Some hid chambers. Some carried fire. Some were designed to explode with a force that terrified soldiers long before explosives became modern science. And we don't need guesswork to figure this out. The evidence is already in museums, in dig sites, and in preserved warships raised from the depths. So, let's open one together. Our first stop is the Mary Rose, Henry VIII's warship that sank in 1545 and was raised in 1982. Inside her hull, conservators found a collection of 16th century gunshot unlike anything seen before. Perfectly spherical cast iron shots, some solid, some clearly hollow. When the hollow ones were x-rayed, the images showed unmistakable internal cavities chambers deliberately cast inside the iron. This wasn't an accident or a miscast. It was artillery engineering. And it tells us something essential. By the mid-1500s, English gunners were using hollow shot designed to burst. But what made them burst? For a definitive answer, we look to a second treasure trove, the Battlefield Archaeology of Towton, 1461, the bloodiest battle of the Wars of the Roses. There, archaeologists recovered early artillery fragments, broken pieces of hollow iron spheres with residue of burnt gunpowder trapped inside. Chemical analysis confirmed black powder compounds, charcoal, sulfur, potassium nitrate, the unmistakable signature of an explosive charge. So inside many 500-year-old cannon shots, we find something very clear. Gunpowder, sealed behind an iron plug. These weren't modern-timed fuses. Most used simple touch-hole fuses packed with slow match or powder. Unreliable. Dangerous. But real. And the intended effect? Fragmentation. The iron shell would split into jagged shards, accelerating outward at lethal speed. We aren't theorizing this. We have the fragments. We have the chemical residues. We have the x-rays. But explosive shot wasn't the only type. A second category, also proven archaeologically, was incendiary shot. The clearest evidence again comes from the Mary Rose and from excavations at various Mediterranean fortresses. Some hollow shot contained hardened pitch, resin, oil-soaked fiber, or tar-like material still visible after centuries. These substances match perfectly with recipes described in Venocchio, Byron Guccio's 1540 treatise, De la Pyrotechnia, which includes instructions for filling shells with flammable mixtures to burn ships or wooden defenses. These were not fireballs in the fantasy sense, but real incendiary devices meant to ignite on impact and spread flame across rigging, siege engines, or stockades. The archaeological confirmation is straightforward. Residue that fluoresces under analysis as resin and tar-based compounds doesn't appear by accident inside an iron sphere. Someone put it there. And then, there are the simplest yet most common cannonballs of all. Solid cast iron shot. Thousands have been recovered across Europe from the Spanish Armada Rex to Bosworth Field to Renaissance fortresses in Germany, Italy, and France. These are exactly what they seem. Dense, heavy spheres made to smash walls, splinter ships, and knock down armor. No charge. No chamber. Just mass and momentum doing brutal work. When archaeologists CT scan them, they show no cavity, no plug, no packing. Pure iron. In a sense, these are the most honest projectiles of the age. So here's what a real 500-year-old cannonball can contain, not speculation, not legend, but what the evidence absolutely confirms. A solid iron core for maximum kinetic damage. Or a gunpowder-filled cavity designed to explode into fragments proven by Towton, Mary Rose, and Fortress excavations. Or a flammable mixture of resin and tar confirmed by chemical residue left inside preserved shells. Everything else, poison gases, diseased materials, exotic chemicals belongs to rumor and rare textual claims, not archaeology. What survives in the ground and in wrecks tells the truth. And the truth is already remarkable enough. Why does this matter? Because these spheres represent a turning point, the dawn of artillery as a science. 
The moment warfare stopped relying solely on metal and muscle and began turning toward chemistry, engineering, and physics. These cannonballs ended the age of the medieval knight. They brought down castle walls that had stood for centuries. They forced generals to rethink every tactic they knew. And today, when conservators slice one open or slide it into a CT scanner, they're not just studying a weapon. They're reading a chapter of human ingenuity and human fear preserved in iron. 500 years later, the inside of a cannon shot is still teaching us how war changed and how the world changed with it. If you enjoy exploring history through the objects it left behind, subscribe more hidden stories are waiting.